Ready to dominate Weekend League? Head on over to MaddenTurf.com for all the ebooks, tips, memberships, everything you need to start heading on that road to top 100. As always, use code CC for 10% off, and I'll see you guys on the sticks. Hey, what is going on, Madden family? We are back with part three of our preparing for Madden 20 series, and it's the Mutt Market. This is a big one. Uh, there's always questions about what should I do when I get the game? Should I sell my cards? Do I keep my cards? But there's a lot of factors really uh, that play into it and what you should do. Now it depends if you're a pack opener, you're not a pack opener, you're a grinder. It all depends. Um, but I'm not in the way here. All right, so we can see this. This is, this, this is a cute chart. This is a gold card, right? Leonard Floyd. Now I believe the first time you could play was around July 31st. He was around 5,000 coins. He's a good gold card. These are, this is a usable gold card, right? Uh, but we see the price sort of kept going and going and going up a bit. Uh, you know, he had a bit of a, a random spike there. But uh, then once the game actually come out around August 10th, he leveled out around 8K, which is a lot more than 5K. It's a big, it's a big increase that happens once people actually get coins. Because at the beginning, nobody's got coins. Now, should, what should you do, right? Well, it depends. Um, like to me, I know that all of the cards are cheaper on day one, the first day of EA access, which would be July twenty fifth. So I try to get the get the big cards because they will rise in price. So if I have a bunch of gold cards, I can sell them. Bam, here's Tariq Cohen. Here's another one. All right, he started her out around 5,000 coins and then sort of peaked out somewhere around eight as well, right? A less desirable gold card, someone like Austin Hooper, had lots of ups and downs, right? He was a 79 overall, but he went to the Julio Jones Diamond set, whereas the Bears didn't have a lot of elites. So again, his price sort of dipped and jumped and yeah, around 3k so some of these cards are going to have a lot of value some of these cards are not going to have a lot of value but in the end it probably evens out pretty well it's going to depend on if there are sets for them right if there are sets that require these cards on day one just like team diamonds well they're going to have a little extra value but let's go into some other cards Where's JJ Watt? Let's go to his prices section here. JJ Watt on day one. You guys can see this fine? Cool. Uh, he was 195,000 coins. And then all of a sudden, when the game released, he's around 250. You're talking an increase of 60K or 33%. Whereas the gold cards, which were valuable, were went up about 60%. Right? And then what, what, what comes after that all depends on promo. Right? So we can't predict that. We have no idea what that is. Let's look at another big desirable elite card with Julio Jones. He was 206,000 coins and he peaked out at 260, which again is about a 30% increase. Nothing crazy, but that's pretty much where things lie. So if you were to buy him on this day, he's cheaper. Your golds are a little more expensive at certain times after, and that's okay. If you are pulling a lot of packs, like I will, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be trying to acquire cards, personally. Now you don't have to. Now some low, a lower elite, an 80 overall, right? How are these prices really change here? We see day one, 9,900 coins. Day 14, he's up 600 coins. It's basically the same thing. Little low elites like this, I'm ditching them pretty quickly. What about full legends? Oh, full legends. Randy Moss, day one, 430,000 coins. And he peaked out around release time, near 600,000 coins which is a much bigger increase. You're talking 50% the increase. And he obviously peaked really high, really, really, even after a month. So if you were just saying you bought here, you buy low, you sell high, just so you can make some coins. But this is why I like to do this. When we look at 
a less desirable day one legend, Derek Brooks. Even then, he was a uh, they don't even have his price for the first day, but 180,000 coins. Game releases, he's 250,000 coins. Again, not 50%, but pretty close. We see these legend cards, these some of the bigger ticket items really go up. Now, what about legend pieces? Because you're going to pull legend pieces. Pulling a full legend is going to be really hard. We see day one. This 82. The war Sean Taylor was 14k. When the game came out, he was 21k. Again, another 50% increase. You're seeing a trend on a lot of these cards. The higher cards, the more desirable cards, bam, the, the, their price is increasing 40, 50, 60%. The desire for good golds, if they go into a set, again, they probably go up 50 or 60%. The golds, which are not desirable, or the low elites, which are not really desirable, they kind of stay the same. We'll take it one more look here. Willie Rofe. Willie Rofe, not the most desirable day one legend. 14,000 coins, and he went all the way up to 20. He doubled in price. Now that I think that's a bit of an aberration. He probably should have been where more. What are we talking? 20, 22k, not 27k. This is a trend. It happens every single year. Why does this happen every single year? Uh, day one, people don't have a lot of coins. The way you get coins is either by selling the cards you open, or you start to grind solos, play online, get get coins however you can get them. Okay, alright, that's fair. But, EA Access is a, is a smaller pool of players. There's 10 hours, you can always get more, but you don't have people playing 24-7. Once the worldwide release, people who have not pre-ordered the game, or if people don't use EA Access and they come in those three days early, all of a sudden there's more people playing. When there's more people playing, there's more coins. When there's more coins, prices go up. It's just the way it is. Now we can go look at uh, some middle tier legend cards as well. We might as well. Let's take a look here. Uh, I think 86s and stuff were the highest early on. Uh, so see if we can find an 86 here from a day one legend. Willie Rofe. Perfect. And it's perfect. Now this would have been his expensive card. It's 35,000 coins when you load it up. And the game released and he was, again, much higher. If you want to go and check, you can check any card you want on my head. Any card at all. It, it, it's not hard. And you can see the same thing. If we switch from programs away uh, back to gold, we'll see this. And again, you can pick out literally any card. The punter for the Steelers. Now, he was not in the sets for Team Diamonds, but he went from 2,000 all the way, you know, 3,000. So a little, it's, a, it's, it's still a 50% increase because it's such a small price. But cards are still increasing. But again, not the most desirable gold card. He doesn't go up very much, right? Uh, let's find some other good ones. that Teams that didn't have like a lot of elites. Uh, and who is a really good diamond? Let's look at team... Uh, who... Texans, right? Houston Texans. Because they had Clowney. Everyone wanted Clowney, right? Will Fuller, again, look at this guy, three, four thousand coins, he sort of stayed stagnant, went up a little bit, okay, that's fair, what about Mr. Zach Fuller, no, here, here's the team I want to show you guys, the Giants, the Giants, because they had Odell, and there were some weird cards that the Giants had, uh, that aren't they're not going to show up all here uh but who went into the set someone like eric flowers right nobody likes eric flowers but he went into the set and look at this price 
2,000 coins on release day. He pretty much tripled in price. So you got to know. You got to know and see what's going on. It's about knowledge. If you sold your Eric Flowers for 2,500 coins, you still got 2,500 coins. And that 2,500 coins is building towards the higher overall players. Selling and holding Eric Flowers for 6,500 coins? Eh, cool. If you would have wanted to do that, you could. That's fine. There's no harm, no foul. But I like to move my cards early on. For sure. Eli Manning, was he was the highest rated gold? Not a lot of price movement there. Which is why I think it all evens out. There's going to be some gold cards you're going to have. And their price isn't going to change. It's fine to sell them. There's going to be some gold cards you have and their price goes up. And you'll lose some coins there. But you're also buying the higher cards at their cheapest price for a while. There's not, there was not very many base elite cards. Uh, it's just like a giant base elite cards. Snacks. He's, per he's a perfect example of a card. Right? Again, you could have bought him here at 40,000 coins for an 85. That's pretty good. And he went up to 65 again. 50% increase. Now he came back down. And that's fine. We'll look at Landon Collins. He was a lower elite, very desirable. A lot of people really wanted Landon. People liked Landon. I believe he had a flashback out already. And we see here his price went up to near 40k. 4 and 82. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You pulled Landon day one, you sold him for 28. You could have got 38, but you wouldn't have that fancy little Randy Moss you got in your binder that you bought for 400,000 coins instead of now having to buy him for 600,000 coins. I'll take my chances and I'll get my cards early on and build my team early on if you have the coins. If you are a grinder, it's a good time to get in because the packs and the coins you're going to get from playing solo challenges or ultimate challenges, whatever they may be called. If it's a thousand coins that day, it's a thousand coins the next day, right? It doesn't go up. So at that point, you want to go get your team. If you're a pack opener and you're going to open a lot of packs, it doesn't really matter. Go in, get the team you want, and have some fun with the game. It's pretty simple. Um, and again, like if you said, if you guys want to go back through other years on Madden, uh, you can do the same thing and you will see the same results. There's no right answer. In my opinion, there's no wrong answer. It's just what it is. What I'm doing, I'm building my team. A lot of people ask that, CC. I'm building my team. I'm going to buy my packs. I'm going to sell my cards. I'm going to get the players I want. Simple. My market's it's consistent. If anything else, mm, you'll see. Have fun. I'm out. Peace.